Thank you so much for hosting me. Of course. Really, I appreciate you, man. But I, I really want to know, is it like a husband and wife hotel or is it a... Um, it's a wife hotel. It's a, it's a wife hotel. <laughs> <laughs> she's, wife hotel. she's the founder, yes. Oh, wow. Good morning from mm -hmm. Kampala. Morning, Maya is in the spirit. so good to worship God. It feels so good to thank God for everything that he has done for you. That's what I always tell my audience. Me, I don't know what will take me away from God. Because the love that I have for God, I just don't show it in public like always, but deep within me, this is my daily meal. My daily prayer is to give God all the glory and great things that he has done in my life and in your life. Even if you don't believe in God, I will believe in God on your behalf. our last day in um, Uganda. Uganda and God has been great and I just have to thank God for such an amazing adventure, amazing trip, amazing everything in Uganda. Where are we right now? We are in Best Western. It's the Best Western Plus. This is the last place that we're staying. I think we've slept in so many. We've slept in the best places. And we never Uganda. spent a dollar in all Not the places that sense. we slept. So God has really been good and we are so grateful. That's why you see Maya is feeling so grateful this morning. Yeah, I mean, for me, I always feel grateful all the time, <laughs> yeah. no matter what. Because without God's grace upon me, believe me, some things that happens to me, I keep on asking myself, what's happening? What's going on? Am I the one? So... I don't take the glory, I have Granted. to give the glory to God. But anyway, I met the person in here from another hotel that I went to sleep from somewhere else and he's like, ah, I'm a big fan and I would love to host you before you go. Yeah, so I cannot just sleep in here just like that. I felt like just showing you guys around, taking you guys around so that in case you make a trip to Kampala, you will also come and sleep here. The yeah. room? It's on another level. This is so beautiful. I love, I love, I love this setup. This sitting room is just so beautiful. Oh wow, look at this kitchen. Cute or cute? My goodness, I love this. Wow. I see what you are saying. Thank you. Oh, I see the bed. This is so beautiful. Oh wow. Look at this. <laughs> Did you guys know he's coming with his wife or what? Guys, look at that. Oh my God. I love it. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. You know what? Oh God, babe. I think, I, I, I think we should go. For breakfast? No. Let's work out first. I'm not a workout person. Plus, I'm so hungry. Let's, let's eat let's, first, then work out. No. No, what you eat, go to the gym and make it work. You can't work out in an empty stomach. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? <laughs> Let's work out. No, let's and eat work out. No. Okay. We're gonna eat, then we'll go work out. Great, let's go. What are you eating? Fruits? Oh definitely. I love eating fruits in the morning. I'm sorry, I will pass fruits now. Main course, main course, main course. So, do you guys eat fruit in the morning? I knew it. You can't have something to do with banana in breakfast in Uganda. But they don't call it plantain here. Do you want some? Of course. That's what I want. Thank you. Uh, 
you're good to go. Anytime I eat this, make sure you don't sleep next to me. <laughs> no, I think, you see, I'm not from East Africa, but anytime I come to East Africa, the only tea that I want is African tea. Okay. We are going to make for you a nice African tea. Thank you, because I'm an African. I don't eat English breakfast, I only go for <laughs> We have a variety of African breakfast, and I'm sure that we're going to enjoy it. African tea? See, whenever you come to East Africa, ask them for African tea and you'll never go wrong. Every country in East Africa got it. Rwanda, Uganda, Tanzania, Kenya, all of them, they got an African tea. And I'm telling my wife, I now need an African tea in when we go back to Africa. I've never done this before. Having breakfast before you work out. Huh? How can you work out on an empty stomach? How can you work out on an empty stomach? I feel like just eating banana alone is good for workout. But I eat rice, chicken, bacon, bacon, African tea. <laughs> and right after that, I jump into the gym to burn the calories, which means I shouldn't have eaten, right? Because by the time I finish, I'll be hungry again. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section, man. This is crazy, but I love the fact that this hotel is so, like a boutique hotel. While exercising, you got the view of the swimming pool right in front of you. Something for the eyes. You get it? You don't get it? Right from exercise, I really want to jump into this swimming pool, but believe me or not, it feels like uh, I'm in Antarctica. <laughs> it feels like a frozen pool, man. This is the difference between being in West Africa and being in East Africa. It's extremely cold in the morning. Ha! But no matter what, I have to jump in. In the bike, guess what I found? Sankara Pan African Library. That's incredible, man. So, Ugandans are Pan Africanists, yeah? Whoa, I wish I had time to go in there just to go check it out. What kind of books that I can read in here? Believe me or not, Thomas Sankara is the best president Africa has ever had. Do you agree with me? Let me know in the comment section. And why do you think so? Hi, how are you? Hello, hello, hello. Ah, good. Hello. Hi. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I've ever seen you on YouTube. Even farm up, I say. I saw you with that guy farm up. You saw my video with farm up. I remember like, I never see you. Ah. ah. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Wow, that's I incredible. I just heard your voice. You heard my voice? Yes, on the bike. I said, ah, is it the one? <laughs> yeah, I love that <laughs> Nice to meet you, nice man. You see yourself, eh? Yeah, you enjoy yeah. Uganda? Of course, I'm enjoying Uganda. Right. You have a message for anyone who uh, has never been to Uganda before? Welcome to Uganda. You guys are part of Africa. Everything is okay with Uganda. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All of them are behind me. Instead of them to come for training, they would not. <laughs> ha! Hurry up, hurry up! 
<laughs> All of them are behind me, they can't match me. Oh my goodness. What did you guys eat this morning? I'm on Ida. Cool. Wow. You're Nigerian? Yeah. Which part of Nigeria? <laughs> ha! Lagos. <laughs> See, I, I, I want you to compare Lagos mm -hmm. and Kampala. Which one is chaos? <laughs> Yeah, Lagos. Lagos. <laughs> you know, Lagos is chaos, mm -hmm. but I feel like Kampala is an organized chaos. Yeah. It's chaos, but yeah, everyone is moving, everyone is moving, but they don't hit each other. <laughs> 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 they are hitting each other. Each other. <laughs> no, it's good to see you. You too. You know, that's a, a Kenyan <laughs> married to a Nigerian. You. Oh, and they nice. both used to live in Ghana. Oh, wow. You see? <laughs> like the this, this is the Africa we want. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. I mean, I've, I always see a, a Kenyan lady mm. married to a Nigerian man. Yeah. But this one, I, I've never seen this combination yeah, before. Like, never. Yeah. <laughs> never. Just less than 30 seconds. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how did both of you meet? Um, uh, uh, we met in Ghana, yeah. I wanted to go on one day, just one day, and then it turned into this. <laughs> Charlie, what's up? <laughs> so the union happened in Ghana. Yeah. I'm so glad. I really get super excited whenever I see women winning. I get super excited when I know that this project was done by a woman. Because I believe that young women out there need mentors. That's why I'm here today. You're born and raised in Uganda. I am born and raised in Uganda. Uh, my early childhood was in a small village in Western Uganda, a, a village called Kepsoni. We grew up in a big family. Uh, I think my father happened to have been one of those successful in, in his family. So he raised his sister's children, his relative's children. So the family was big. Um, simple, but a happy childhood. We never lacked. We didn't have much, but we never lacked. I walked, I think, three to 3.5 kilometers while I was young, up to primary seven. What do you mean by you walk? I walked to school, day in, day out. Three, 3.5 kilometers a single day. So that makes what, seven? Seven. To and fro? Every day. Every single day. I hope you had shoes though. I had shoes and at one time, I think the other kids were looking at me like, why do you have shoes? So my father said, so you're not going to have shoes. So I walked. <laughs> <laughs> I was the odd man out. So no shoes. But absolutely happy childhood. You know what brought me here? Who? Your hotel. I, I, I've spent, I've, I've traveled across Africa. I've slept in countless hotels, but as soon as I entered the room, I, ent I, I became an ambulance, you know, more like shouting wow, wow, wow all the time, you know, that's how ambulance moves. Yeah, the sound is like... Moving fast, wow, wow, yeah. wow, 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 <laughs> wow, 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 wow. So yesterday, I came to the room, from the bed, I was like, wow. From the chest, I was like, wow. From the dining, I was like, wow. The kitchen from the area. kitchen, I was like, wow. That's how I turned into an ambulance. And I was like, I really want to know the person behind this. And I was told that this hotel is owned by a woman. And I'm like, you know what? If the owner is a woman, an African, then I need to speak to the person. And that's what brought me here. So I, I, I really want to know the journey. Okay, the inspiration behind the hotel first, before I ask you my next question. I love traveling and I've traveled quite a bit. I like staying in boutique hotels mm. because they are small, they're personal. I don't like the, the sound of echo in big hotels or just being a number. 
So in these small hotels, I get the attention that I deserve. So I realized that there was none in the country. Um, and if there were any, I didn't think they were up to the standard, international standard. So I hatched it in my head, put it on the paper, and boom, we have a hotel. But I believe that it did not just wake up and build a hotel. So I want to know how the journey started. I mean, you, you were born in East, uh, West Uganda, came to Kampala. At what point did you come to Kampala? I came to Kampala when I finished primary school. When I finished primary seven, I spent most of the time in Kampala with my elder siblings who were already in Kampala. So I went to school here. I've always lived here and I love living here. You never left the country? Never left the country. You mean whatever you've achieved, you achieved it in Uganda? Yes, absolutely. But I thought it's not possible to make it in Uganda. It's possible to make it in Uganda. It's harder to make it when you're a woman. Yes. What do you mean? How hard? Yes. Very hard. It's a, it's a chauvinistic society and uh, People do not think that a woman can actually achieve big things. Women are supposed to be seen and not heard and look after children and uh, prepare food for the family and that's it. You own a hotel, but I know and believe that that's not your first ever business. No, um, I mean, I could talk about the businesses I've done all day. I have done real estate, as in getting big chunks of land parcel them and sell small pieces. I have built uh, apartments, houses and sold them at wow. different times. I have been an agent of Uganda breweries selling their products. I have been an agent of BAT. I have uh, been in financial services. I have been in construction. I, I've been there. I have been there. Actually the hotel was partly also to look at retirement. What would, how, how would my retirement look like? So does it mean that you, you were working, I mean, nine to five job, or when you started, you, had, you just started with your own business? No, I worked, I mean, my life, I have always been a private sector person. When I finished university, I had a stint in one or two places, mm. but largely I've been in business. Why? Maybe I'm unemployable. <laughs> I like being my own boss. I like doing my own thing, but um, that's what I like. Um, I like to make things happen. What is the first ever business that you did? Well, the first business that I did I've done so many. But the first, first business to exchange something for money, goods for money, I was at the university and I was a finance secretary. So when we organized a social for, for, you know, for the hall, mm. I realized that the guys who sold drinks walked away with a lot of money. I was like, okay, this is interesting. Next time, I organized my own drinks. I brought in somebody to sell. And I walked away with the money. <laughs> <laughs> Is that money that you built on to today? No, I come from a family of people who have a little money, have had a little money. Mm. So yes, that building from that one business, another family, that's it. What is that one thing that you think you did different? I don't think there's one thing I have done differently, but I think I have been consistent, I've been resilient, and I have been disciplined. From your experience, what do you think an ordinary African can do to make it in Africa? Because I believe that if you have done it, I can do it too. Of course, and I have no doubt that, uh, I also think that many people have, have made it in Africa. I just happen to be one of them. Um, 
I think that just like anywhere else, you need to focus on what you want mm. in life mm. and uh, have the discipline to pursue and never give up. Um, I'm not here because I have not lost in business. I am not here because I have had it all perfectly uh, thought out. No, I've had setbacks, a major. Can you give us a major, one major setback? Well, look at COVID. We had just opened the hotel because we opened the hotel October 2018. And one year later, there was COVID. We closed for two years. I mean, we lost a lot of money. A lot. And um, so people came and said, you can turn it into a hospital. You can turn it into this. I, I just stayed the course. And I, I believe that we have survived. So what are the lessons that you've learned running a hotel? I have learned big lessons. Um, I've learned that hotels are not buildings, they're not beds, they're not chairs. Hotels are systems, hotels are people. And I have learned to value people. Mm. Because I'm not at the hotel 24-7. But when you arrive at the hotel, somebody will welcome you, somebody will make your bed, somebody will have cleaned your room, and all those people matter. How many people have you employed? Right now, I think we have about 52 people. Oh. Most of them women. Wow. The women yes. empowerment. Yes. Why are you empowering women? Oh my God. I know what it means to be a woman. I know what it means to break through as a woman. Um, I mean, I raised my kids as a single woman. So I know what it means. Every girl child needs an opportunity and it's not always big it is because they can work and put food on the table of their kids it's because they can come to such a hotel and learn a thing or two and be mentored and and women are very reliable in a workplace if you have a message for young women out there what would that message be <sighs> young women out there i know it's hard but believe in yourself, work hard, be disciplined, and be consistent. I, I am a, I'm an, I'm an eternal optimist. I think anything is possible. You just have to put your mind on it. Must women depend on their men? Young women out there? No, I think women should work with their men. I think it should be a partnership. I think it's more beautiful when it's a partnership. Everybody needs to play a part, make a contribution. That, that's what I think. I don't believe that I sh women should sit down and everything comes to them. How does it feel like being um, a female entrepreneur in Africa? It's both sweet and sour. I've been called bossy. I've been called aggressive because women are supposed to be hard, seen and not be hard. Women are supposed to answer when they're asked. But when you run a business, you need to talk, you need to be hard, you need to direct, you need to give orders. And that doesn't go well with many people, mm. uh, including very low cadre. They, they don't feel like a woman should order them around. So I've earned all those names. Um, at the same time, it's nice to f know that you can make a contribution, you can change a life. Somebody is feeding their kids because of you. Mm. It, it's very, it's very, very satisfying. What is that one thing that makes you so proud? Well. I don't think there's any one thing that makes me proud, but um, I'm glad I have raised my girls and uh, raised them well. Oh, oh, I was 
lucky to be able to raise them to so that they don't lack they don't feel like oh my god oh my mom can't afford this my mom can't afford that what inspires you to do what you do what makes me out of bed and inspires me is to do good just to do good for whatever i do what do you say has been your biggest lesson resilience Never to give up. Never to give up. No matter what. No matter what. Never to give up. The major challenge that you face throughout this whole journey? To really have a place um, on the table as a woman, as a businesswoman. Mm. Many times, people just underlook you just because you're a woman. When you're even smaller in size, <laughs> people start sizing you up just at every turn for no good reason. You know, we have so many young people out there who believe that it's not possible to make it on the continent unless you travel out there. And you're here telling me that you never left the country. If you have a message for Africans, what would that message be? I think the future is in Africa. I like being in Africa, I, I, I'm a proud African, and you can make it in Africa. Just focus on whatever you're doing, it, and it doesn't matter what. But, but, but in Africa, capital is a problem, yes. well, especially starting up a new business. Yes, it's hard, because capital is expensive. Capital in Africa is very expensive, but believe me, there's always a way. You can start small and you can grow. And that's what patience does. And that's what discipline does. You don't make, as they say, it doesn't matter how much you make. It matters how much you save. So if you make $20, please keep 10. The tendency, the urge for quick grat gratification you want to go and buy a shoe, you want to do all these things. No, those ones will come. So patience, patience, discipline. I do not think you can do it without discipline. If you had a chance to change one thing in Africa, what will it be? I would make sure that a girl child is valued, is supported, because they carry the burden of these families. Some of them at a very early age. And some of them with really great potential, they don't get to get there because they drop out of school, because they were pregnant, or if there's no money in the family, the first child to get out of school is a girl. And really, really, if there's something I can do, or in the future, if there's something I can do, is to support anything girl child. If you have a message to Africans living in the diaspora, what would that message be? The message would be there is so much that Africa can be can offer you. Uh, it's the next emerging market. It's the most growing economy set of economies in the world, and the opportunities and it's for us to leverage. We can't wait for other people to do it for us. So. All this brain drain, most of the people in the diaspora are really people who are talented, you know, doctors, engineers, um, bankers, uh, software engineers, people who can come and build this country to the next level. Um, there's really not a big software industry yet in Uganda, everything is telecom. So anybody in the diaspora, is, you need to start focusing about making it back where you come from and building your country and, and your, your uh, continent. I want to say thank you so much for talking to me and I really appreciate your time.